the box? Who's in the box? Uh, what's in the box? What's in the box? Hey guys, this is Jason Robinson from Illustration by Design. And it's been a while, but I am uh, posting this uh, video to let you know that I got something in the mail. It is a mail call today, an unboxing video. And what I got in mail was this. Boom. You can see there. Zoom in. Whoa. Mike S. Miller, Blacklist Universe. And so this has to be Lone Star. Part two. Soul of the Soldier? Yeah, Soul of the Soldier. Yeah, that's it. So, I've been looking forward to this, and it's a big, thick box, too. Look at that. This is like a book. This is like a huge tomb. Tome? Tomb? Tome. One of the two. Of comic book goodness. And I'm looking forward to opening it. It's going to be really awesome. So, let me do that right now. This is a Gemini mailer, which is awesome. As you can see here at the corners, it's been through the ringer at the post office. It's been banged around quite a bit, smashed, smushed, crushed, but the actual comic book inside is protected. So I'm hoping that there is, there's no damage and it will be perfect condition. Slice it open. Come on, come on, come on. Let's see here. Oh, now I've ever I've already read the book because Mike sent out a PDF of the book a while back, and um, after he actually sent out um, well, I guess he sent out the, he sent out a PDF to me. I don't know if he sent out to everybody, but I got a copy, and a bunch of other people got copies of the book ahead of time because he wanted. Uh, some uh, people look it over to uh, find any mistakes, any misspellings, you know, editorials type stuff. So I saw it then, and then I also saw his other book, Monster Hunt, which he sent out to everyone quite a while ago, about a month ago. So I've read the books in question that are in here, and uh, so I'll probably give a review about them as well once I unbox it. But let me open it up. Oh, oh, oh. Uh oh, what's going on? Oh, still some tape right there. Hold on. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, come on. Come on. Let, 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 let go. Uh, uh, why is it grabbing on? There we go. Alright. Alright, let's see what we got here. Now, I got, what tier did I get? I got like a special, I think, first brigade brigade tier, where I got like, what did I get? I think I got like a copy of each cover. I'm not sure. Let's find out. First one. Oh, Lone Star Soul of the Soldier. Oh, it's signed too, by Mike S. Miller. That's the signature right there. That's scrawl. Um, yeah, very nice. This is a cover drawn by Mike. Colored by... Who is this colored by? I don't know who. Mm, not sure. But it's colored by someone. It might be colored by that guy. Jamberini? Jambur, Jambiri? I don't know. I have no idea. Anyway, it's a great cover. Looks good. That's foreshadowing, folks. That's foreshadowing. It's very cool. Okay. That's, that's cover one. What's this? Ooh, this one's also signed. Is it signed by Mike? I guess it is. Yeah, here's another one. This one is drawn by John Malin. John Malin cover. Very cool. And it, who's it colored by? Is this colored by um, Kyle Ritter? It might be. It might be colored by Kyle Ritter. But it's a cool cover. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know if... I think this was penciled by John and inked by Mike. So, because I can see... I can see John Malin's work in it, but the inking is better than John Malin's. Um, and I think that this is Mike's. I can see Mike's features in some of it. So especially here in that face and the hair. So I think this was ink by Mike. I might be wrong, but I think it was ink by Mike. Cool cover. Looks good. 
Nice combination of styles. Very good. Love the coloring. Awesome. All right, that's number two. Number three. What's this? Ooh, cool. A Gone with the Wind cover. Now, this cover is, should now be illegal since Gone with the Wind has been canceled by HBO. HBO Max? Whatever. Um, this, this is a, now a racist cover. This is officially a racist, um, problematic cover. So this will be worth a lot of money. And it's also signed by Mike Miller. So um, he, can, he cannot uh, deny having drawn it. So he, T2, shall be canceled. Um, we'll, 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 we'll work on that on Twitter. But... Other than that, it looks really good. Great coloring. Love the flames in the background. Great work. Great uh, Sir Pieta um, look to it with uh, Angel and uh, Lone Star. Um, very cool. Very cool stuff. Nice. All right. Book number three. What's this one? Woo! Ah, cool. This one is the this is the Ethan Van Skyver cover. Ooh. And this one it will also be worth a lot of money because this is before the uh, the uh, the comic gate rift um, that has occurred. Um, so uh, this is probably the last um, uh, collaboration between uh, Mike S. Miller and uh, Ethan Van Skyver. So this will be worth five gazillion dollars uh, on uh, on eBay, no no doubt. And it's also signed by Mike. I need to get Ethan to sign this as well at some point. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know when. <laughs> he has to do conventions. Um, but um, see, signed by Ethan. And this is also colored by Kyle Ritter, which is very cool. Nice cover. I like it. I love the colors. I mean, Kyle's such a great colorist. I mean, it's like, because I saw this in black and white when Ethan first did it, and I was not impressed by it. <laughs> I was not impressed by it in black and white. But as soon as I saw the color, I was like, oh, dang, I, Kyle like took that took that art and elevated it from like i don't know a seven to like an 11 it, it was it was just it's so much better in color i mean he it's 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 just really good um great stuff yeah very nice cover well done all right what's this next one? Oh, cool 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 the elliot Fernandez cover for Monster Hunt. This is the team up between uh, um, Lone Star and his crew, and uh, it's a three-way team up. Um, uh, Jawbreakers, and then uh, John Malin's uh, uh, Graveyard Shift. So this is uh, based off of the classic Marvel Comics Secret Wars issue one cover by um, uh, Mike Zek. And, uh, well, it says right there, after Mike Zek and John Beatty. So, um, yeah, beautiful work. And also colored by Kyle Ritter. Is this, I guess this is signed by Mike. Or not, I don't know, is this signed by Elliot? I don't know. But it looks like Mike's signature, same kind of scrawl. So, I don't know. I don't know, though. But looks good. Great cover. Well done. Very cool. Thanks, Elliot. Oh, oh, cool. What is... Oh, neat. Okay, here's the black and white. Okay, so you can actually compare now. Here's the black and white version of Ethan Van Skyver's cover versus the color version. And I, I don't know. I mean, me personally, I, I mean, I just think the color version is just... Wow. It just kind of blew me away. So, but, you know. Your opinion may vary. I just, I just think it just adds so much to it. I think it's just really, really cool. Black and white. Color. Cool stuff. Man, these are great. I usually do not buy multiple issues of any comic. I usually just buy one copy, and that's it. But uh, Mike had this really good deal for, uh, I guess, First Brigaders for uh, for Lone Star 2. And I was like, I'm, I'm getting it. So, um Cool. These are, I guess, sort of, what they, what, what they call these when they don't have, um, uh, I guess they're just line art variants. But, uh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Great, great work. Great work. Great work. Great work. Oh, cool extras. Yay. Okay. That's, there we go. That's great work. Great work. All right. Let's see the extras. All right. Um, oh, okay. It's taped on the inside. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Yeah. I'm sure Comic Book Bear will love this. So much tape. Um, put that there. Open this up. Looks like patches and cards. Is a patch. Oh, cool. First Brigade. This is actually a cool patch. I wouldn't actually, I actually wouldn't mind wearing this. Unlike a lot of the other patches I've gotten. This is actually pretty cool. Very American. I like that. All right. Here are the Lone Star cards. Um, one by Matthew Weldon. Very cool. Nice work. Matthew Weldon, of course. It's Matthew Weldon. Oh, nice. Um, oh, okay. Got a little neat. Um, this is like a puzzle. Let me move this out of the way. Um, put that there. This one is by John Malin. Very, very cool. I don't think I'm going to have enough to finish. Am I going to have enough to finish this puzzle? I might. Cool. This is by John Malin. Oops, I'm knocking stuff over. Sorry. Give you a chance to look at it. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, cool. Oh, I think I do have enough to f finish the uh, the puzzle. This one is by, I believe, Kanan White, if I'm not mistaken. Kanan White, yep, this is right there. Art by Kanan White. And is that, um, who's that in the background? Is that, I don't know who that is. I mean, it's just a generic werewolf. At first I thought it might be, uh, what's his face? Um, not Bigfoot Bill, the other one. Shinobi Sasquatch, but it's not. This, is it? I don't know. I, whoever. It's a werewolf. It's a wolf guy. Anyway. All right, cool. Yes, they got the whole, the whole, the whole thing. Whole, whole, uh, sort of cover here. And this last one is by Gary Shipman. The author and creator of um, um, Mouse of Might, um, Titan Mouse of Might. If you haven't already, go check out Titan Mouse of Might. It's pretty cool. And uh, that's Gary Shipman's Lone Star. Cool. Oh, cool. We got the whole cover. Bam. Look at that. Bam, bam, bam. Look at that. Beautiful. Nice little homage to uh, Captain America's cover from uh, the 1940s. You see that? So, um, yeah, very cool. Very, very cool stuff. So that is, that are all, that's all the extras for, uh, for Lone Star Soul of the Soldier. Um, is very, very cool package. How many comics did I get total? Um, let me, let me put this back in a bag so I don't destroy it. It is raining outside. It's pouring buckets, raining cats and dogs. So... Luckily, my comics are safe inside and are not still sitting outside in the rain. Unfortunately, it didn't start raining until after I brought them in. So, that is good as well. Alright. Let me see the actual comics. Ah, uh, how many did I get? Did I get like nine or ten? I got one, two, whoops, is that two? Yes, I got two, three. Why is this so thick? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine comics. All right, nine comics. Whoops, uh, nine comics. Nine comics total. That's a lot. Um, and I got, like I said, I got a good deal on them uh, due to the tier that I I purchased. Now, in regards to the actual story, uh, I guess I'll go. Let me let me do Monster Hunt first, um, because that got sent out to all the backers. So I don't think there are any real spoilers in it, um, but um, where, where did I put it? I just had it. It's on the bottom, of course. Of course, of course, it's on the bottom. All right, Monster Hunt. This is a book written and drawn by Mike Miller, um, and including uh, his characters, uh, Lone Star, and the Unknown Soldiers, combining them in a sort of a team up with Graveyard Shift by uh, John Malin and uh, the, um, uh, yeah, what's, what's that, uh, uh, I keep thinking Ghostbusters, um, Jawbreakers w by uh, Richard C. Meyer, your boy Zach, okay? So it's a three-way team up with those characters. Now, I read, the, I read the story in PDF, my thoughts on it. It was okay. It was an okay, okay story. Um, the art is, is good. You know, it's, it's Mike Miller, you know, he does good art. Um, if you've seen his stuff before, you know, you know what to expect. Great figure work, 
Um, yeah, good inking. Um, you know, it's it, it, style's not for everyone, but it's. I mean, he's he's a great artist. I mean, he's really good. Um, he's he's, he's a, an extremely fast. So, um, you know, I mean, look at those trees. Look at that. I mean, it's, I mean, to me, I mean, stuff like that, like, shows me how good of an artist he is. I mean, everything from from the the way he draws guns to you know human figures to uh, backgrounds. I mean, Mike, Mike Miller is is extremely skilled. Now, my problem with the with the book itself, it definitely isn't the art; it's the story. The story is sometimes confusing, but also I, I, I think, okay, like, like this, this scene here, can I, do I need to zoom out? I don't know. There, there's this, they're telling a story and then it, and then it cuts to a scene in the middle of the story. I think it's, was it one page? It's only one page. Okay. That makes absolutely no sense unless you have read, read Graveyard Shift, uh, John Malin's book. If you haven't read that book, this isn't going to make a lick of sense to you. And it just seems out of place inside the story because it, it doesn't explain how it ties into, it's just, it's just, it's just weird. And it's kind of jarring because when I, when I got to this page, I was like, what, who is this? And then you keep reading the rest of the story and these characters never even show up again or even referenced again. So it's just, it's in there. And I guess it's a cool sort of uh, Easter egg, uh, you know, if, you, if you're a fan of Graveyard Shift, but it's just kind of, if you're not, if, 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 if you're not super familiar with them, um, it's just, it's just confusing. And for, I got the first Graveyard Shift. So, but even then I didn't, I didn't know who this character was. I didn't, I didn't, instantly register to me okay this is the guy from graveyard shift i was just like who is this guy and it made me question okay who is he i guess they're going to explain later on in the story but he never showed up in the, in the, in the rest of, of the story and it was never explained so it for me it was just confusing so that's one thing another thing is that there are a couple of characters in monster hunt that are that are just introduced in Monster Hunt, and then and are ma and they're members of, of the of the various teams, members of the Unknown Soldiers, and also members of Jawbreakers. You, and you barely get a chance to know them, and then they're gone. Okay, never never to be seen again. And so, because you have no connection with these characters, you know they may they, I mean they only have a few lines each. In, in, in the in in the book so when when something happens to them you don't care it's just like or it, it's it's again it's, it's confusing I, 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 I things happen in a book and and I'm just like what okay okay something okay that happened but what was the point of that happening um and it doesn't make any sense so it, it, and again, it's, 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 it, this is a, this is a short book. This is, it's not really a short book. It's, it's the size of an average comic book. It's 24 pages, maybe. Um, but, um, for the, for the, for the events that happen in the book, you read it and it feels like only half the story is being told and there's not going to be a sequel to this. So I was just like, you know, it would have been better if if I, I wish the story had been 48 pages so that they could sort of build on who these characters were, why we should care about them, um, you know, and and had some connection to them. Because without that, it just seems like, yeah, you know, it, 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 it seems kind of pointless to uh, to even have to even have them in a the book. It's like, why even have them in the book if you're not going to sort of flesh them out more? And I guess that sort of leads to the, the third problem I have with the book. There, there's no real antagonist in the book. There's, there's, no, there's no villain in the book. Um, they're, they're fighting each other due to uh, mistaken identity. 
which I guess you can say that, I mean, that mistaken identity is a common trope in comic books. You know, they, they, you know, they think that, you know, one another is the villain, so they fight, and then they become friends, and then they go after the real villain. But in this book, there is no real villain. It's just them sort of fighting each other, you know, for, you know, half the book. And then it's just like, oh, okay, you're not, you're not a bad guy. Okay, let's, let's just go on our, let's go our, our merry way. Hey, look, hey, hey, yeah, we're all friends now. Except, you know, people ended up dying as a result of the, of their mistake, and it's like they don't care. It's like it's just like, oh well, well we're we're just, you know, we're just imperfect men. We're just imperfect men. You know, people died. Oh well, oh that's a shame. Oh well, eh. You know, let's, let's just let's just go on home. <laughs> it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Um, and so again, it just seemed like half the story is being told, and I'm, I was kind of left wanting with this. Um, so Monster Hunt, I don't know, at a scale of one to ten, I'd probably give it a. I'd probably give it a five. <laughs> um, the art is great. The story is okay, but it's just, it's just very kind of, it's kind of shallow, kind of empty. And, and I, I, I know that part of it is, is due to the length. I mean, it's, it's a very, it's a, it's a 24 page. Oh, that's a, oh man, that's a cool back cover. Great cover, Mike. Um, <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I think it's due to the length of, this, of the story. It's a, it's a standard comic book size. So, but I, I think that if you're going to have a comic book size that's just 24 pages, you need to have a story that fits 24 pages. It, it seems like Mike tried to fit a 48 to 64 page story into a 24 page book and it, and it doesn't quite work. Um, and left me confused and eh, a little, eh, what do I say? No, leave me annoyed. I guess annoyed in a sense that I know the book could have been better. So, but the art's great. So, that's my review of Monster Hunt. A nice looking book, but uh, could have been better. Now, I kind of have the exact opposite feeling for Soul of the Soldier. Soul of the Soldier, Lone Star Soul of the Soldier, the second issue of Lone Star by Mike S. Miller, is fantastic. It is really, really, really good. Especially, I mean, compared to the first issue, I mean, first issue was like, eh, it was okay, it was good, I liked it, it was good, it was well done. Second issue, much better, much better. Um, the characters are fleshed out much more. Um, you find out more about the uh, relationship between uh, uh, Angel and Lone Star. Um, you know, uh, they get closer together. Um, stuff happens in the book that I won't spoil, but really cool stuff. When I say cool, I mean cool stuff in terms of the stuff that happens. How do I put that? It just makes no sense. Um, cool stuff in the sense that it's not real consequences happen in the book. Okay, that's what I mean by cool. Consequences happen in the book. Um, and it's to me, that's cool. I like seeing, I mean, it's the, sort of the exact opposite of, uh, of Monster Hunt for me, where, where you know, con things happen, but there are no consequences to those things happening. Here, things happen and there are consequences, and then those lead to other consequences, and I guess, I guess in the next book. But um, Lone Star is it's really well done. Um, art is great. The story is great. Um, we got we got to get a little return of the of the uh, was MS thirteen gang that he fought in the first book here, and again it's. it's, it's sequel <laughs> they get beat up again surprise surprise um <laughs> but um no it's uh it's a uh, it's a great book well i mean it's, it, and again it's sort of the exact opposite of, of monster hunt i mean i like the art it's the same art same artist but the story is what i really like about um soul the soldier it's 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 just really good and and it's so much better than in monster hunt um that that's that's kind of what frustrated me about Monster Hunt. It's like I, ah, I just I just wish it I wish I wish I wish it were forty eight pages, so we could have gotten more from from that story. But in that, it, going back to this book, it's just well done. I mean, look at this huge fight scene between Nazis and and the Allied forces. Um, it's just 
just cool stuff. Um, really well done. Um, and, uh, you know, he has, he has like, you know, Antifa characters in here, um, you know, doing their thing. Lone Star comes in, you know, he saves the day, he smashes through with his motorcycles, Harley Davidson, because he's all American. Um, you know, he's taking out sawed off shotguns, blowing people away. Boom. Um, whack, slam, slam, pow. Great stuff. Um, the only complaint I have about this book and it's a uh, it's a major complaint is uh is right here this this right here the wicker chair this wicker chair mike spent what a week 3 weeks a month 2 months just drawing every freaking line on this wicker chair throughout this and this wicker chair only shows up in about two pages of the book, but Mike spent more time on this than he did on, you know, I think pro it probably spent half, half of his time on this book, just drawing that worker chair. Um, yeah, it's only two pages and he spent like, a, like, like a year just doing these two pages. So if he, if he just skipped this wicker chair, we could have had Lone Star probably, probably last summer, summer of, uh, 2019. So that's my main complaint about the book. Um, too much worker chair. I'm hoping that, uh, the next, uh, the next book, there will be no wicker chair, and uh, you know you, you can throw in a pigeon or two if he wants, but uh, you know the wicker chair has to go. It's just, uh, it's just too, uh, too time consuming. He could have, he could have doubled the size of a monster hunt if he just left out that wicker chair. So, but uh, no, it's a, uh, it's a great book. I really, I mean, I guess it's too late now to buy it, but <laughs> I encourage everybody to read it. If you have a chance, read this book. It's well done, well drawn, well well colored by uh um J Nanjan uh Jambari. Uh, well lettered by Bill Tortellini. Um so um uh, it's a great book. Well done Mike. I really like it and I look forward. That's another cool thing. Oh man, I like that. I like the back cover too. And that's another cool thing about this book. It makes you when you get to the end, it's it has an ending that makes you want to read Lone Star 3 now. And that's the best type of ending for a comic book. And it's sort of a cliffhanger, but it's a good cliffhanger. It's not just like a sort of generic, oh, he's driving off a cliff, will he survive? It's, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a cool cliffhanger where, um, you know, you want to see what happens next. And uh, you're looking forward to the next issue. I, you know, Mike is, uh, what is he, I mean, he has to be probably, just based on what I've seen through his live streams, he has to be, uh, uh, you know, halfway through drawing um, Lone Star 3 right now. Um, so, you know, half the work is done. Um, and, uh, you know, I look forward to seeing it uh, whenever it comes out. So, but that's my review of uh, Lone Star Solo Soldier. Much better than Lone Star. But well, I shouldn't say much better because Lone Star Heart of the Hero, uh, Lone Star 1, Heart of the Hero was a good book. Um, but Lone Star Solo Soldier Part 2. Um, was uh was quite a bit better and for me much more satisfying as a comic book so uh, on a scale of one to ten i'd probably give Lo the first lone star yeah probably give it 7.5 i would give lone star solo soldier a 10 it's really well done um so uh I look forward to the third installment i hope it is as good if not better than this one and uh yeah i really look forward to seeing it so um yeah uh but anyway Hope you enjoyed this review, this unboxing, and yeah, if you haven't already, please give this live stream, not live stream, give this, uh, give this uh, video a thumbs up, and uh, please hit the uh, hit the like button and uh, and hit the bell for notifications of future videos, and subscribe to my channel if you if you would. So I'm gonna let you guys go. You guys have a great day, and uh, again, if you have a chance, go check out Lone Star. Okay, take care. Bye.